Hey, I'm Kev Care, Mr. Cone. Welcome back to MotoGP 17 and the manager career. As we're here in Germany in the Saxon Ring circuit. A very slow first half of that, then it just speeds up in the second half. As you go for the final couple of corners. And Madonna looking to recover after a disastrous couple of rounds in Spain and the Netherlands. After Nidoki made a breakthrough in France and Italy. It's definitely back to square one in the category. But the Saxon Ring has been a nice to play to him in the past. So let's see if he can kick start his season once again. It's about the halfway mark. And he's in the top ten in the championship, which was kind of the aim at the beginning of the season, so. At least he's still on track on that, but we want more. We want top five, maybe. We want to maybe even win it all. Maybe a media up to no P. But at the moment, looks like he's going to have one more season in Moto2 before that leap. This is a decent lap at the moment. Not going wide anywhere, not crashing. And you have to be very cautious over that left hand over with that rise. I could go flying in the air, don't really want that. It's all oh, using all of the track and somehow holds on. Oh, he's a goner there. He's going to the inside of the penultimate corner again. Very bumpy. Bike feels like it's floating over some raves rather than a racetrack there. Is out the final corner. I thought that was a decent effort there. 25 7. Let's see how well McDonald's done. The dry conditions helping as well. You know, he definitely kept the back end in line. That was the big problem in the last two rounds where it was a bit squee on the back end, but it felt good around that lap. So let's see. He's not going to be right at the top. In fact, he's going to be two seconds back in, it looks like, because Alex Marquez has grabbed another pole ahead of his teammate Morbido with Lutin third. With Oliveira leading the second row ahead of Pasini and Baldazari. Then Ekagami leading the third row ahead of Shirota on home turf on that suitor. And Verge and Kent rounds out the top ten ahead of Marini and Courtois. As there's McDonald at the back end of the sit throw. Alongside Isaac Finales and Sarin. So, a decent qualifying in the top 20. That's what we're aiming for in qualified. Just the top 20. As for Vanda, he qualified in last. So, let's see if the elusive twins can move forward in the race. So, here we are looking at the grid. And you can see Bazzini very happy with fifth. And looking further down just outside the top 10 again is Marini and Courtois. I'll share in that fourth row alongside Danny Kent. Regular visitors there, and there is light still on the third page on the sit throw. As you can see, you can further down this. Simone Corsi, the veteran, in 21st in his home round. And right at the back is Jack Vandu's own special row. weekend of preparation, the race is about to start. You could cut the tension with a knife. But all that matters now is who gets across that line first. Indeed, Gavin Emmett. Will it be McDonald? So he does have race pace round in the past. Let's see if it continues in his motor two race. So the lights appear. And go out for eight laps. This German circuit and a decent start down the inside of Cortuaro. Is he or is that Pons? No, it's Cortuaro in front, of course. And there is McDonald down the inside of the Frenchman. He's got Bagnaia around his outside. And all bashing elbows with the Italian rider, but he's made it through in 11th. Now through this long right hand that goes on forever. Oh, it looks like the Tet 3 is lost out. Got shuffled back by everyone, including McDonald, who's up into the top 10. It's behind Marini and Nakagami. Short shifting up. Right on the tail of Marini. Looking around the outside of the Italian, out of the left hand, a good run. Oh, look around the inside of Nakagami, but then he had to get on the brakes and oh! Into the side of Bagnaia. Alongside Marini around the outside Nakagami. And they all got held up by, is that Fasini? No, Oliviero in fifth. We're we'll short up to see it. For McDonald takes advantage. He goes around the outside. Up into the top five. He's got Baldazari. Mark VDS twins. And Luti in front. As it is Morbidetti. He takes the lead at the end of this first lap. Cracking start again for McDonald, but it's not about the starts, it's everything else that's been an issue. As here comes Oliveira. 
As oh, Jorge Navarro's down out of 24th. The Spaniard. It's down this front stretch. The brake's so early. He's working two machines. And looks like Livio didn't manage to do that as McDonald slides back by into fifth. Got Pasini up to seven ahead of Nakagami. And here comes Oliviero again. The Portuguese rider not giving up on this fifth place for the time being in that first sector. And McDonald has never really been strong. It's the second half of the lap where he kicks up a gear. And here we go. Let's unleash it. It's in third. Oh, it's unleash it. You get on the pound and you have to immediately let go. It's down the third. The left, running so smoothly around this circle, McDonald. Compared to Assen, as it goes around the outside of Baldessari, almost into the back of the Mark VDS as well. Going side by side with Marquez. Oh, he's under the dirt, McDonald. Well, he had the move done. So oh, they go through the waves of the Panama corner. McDonald definitely got the race pace in it, so moving forward on this second lap and on the tail of the top three, which is led by Luti, then the Mark VDS twins, McDonald, Baldazari rounds out the top five, going on to this third lap. McDonald did the fastest lap there, 24 7. Faster than his qualifying effort. And I thought his qualifying effort was decent. Obviously not. As it looks like Luti's been mugged into the first couple of corners. Marcus leads ahead of Morbidelli. Down the side, half a second back. So the charge from Oliviera hasn't materialised for the time being. But he's probably all over the tail of the Italian behind us. Go through the left hander. Look at that. Barely any tyre wear this race as well, nicking in the bottom right. Very good to see. And now here's McDonald's favourite part. He's very brave over that rise. As Remy Garden is down on the Tech 3. And it works beautifully to McDonald. Around the outside of Mark Vides trains into the lead. It's been a while. It's been a couple of rounds. The elusive rider leads again in Moto2. But oh, here come the Mark Vides trains. With a tactical mugging. It looks like. So he gets back up to second, going into the final corners. Oh, of course, he's down on home turf. They want to see that for a rider in their home race. As Marcus leads ahead of Morbid Daddy, helping Marcus in the championship here. If it finished as it is, he'd be leading the championship, I believe. At the halfway mark. At just a couple of points. So, we're all doing a favour, this Spaniard, to the younger Marcus brother. Himself a former Moto3 champion as well. After he battled with Jack Miller for the title. Then the Australian jumped up to MotoGP immediately. Well, that is Marcus. It took a couple of years for Moto2 to find his feet, but he's finally there with Mark VDS. And he's been challenging the title, of course, in the past couple of seasons with Morbidelli. Got a good run. Now over the rise, around the outside avenues, over the curve to avoid. Well, okay, there's McDonald. He takes the lead going on to the back straight for almost a second. Now into the long corner, we saw the tactical mugging. Nothing happened in this lap, though. So he uses all the curve. You don't want to be using the outside curve, there you can see it really spits you out. Into the final corner, you've got to be careful not to lock up there. And now into the second of the race, McDonald just leads from Marcos with Morbidelli in third. And here comes Marcos, diving down the inside in the first corner, it goes wide. McDonald takes back the lead. Almost a repeat of what Oliviera did a couple of laps ago. Marcus looking down the inside into the right hander, but Donald tries to hold on, but Marcus squeezes by. Donald not having any of it. This is a battle we want to see, Marcus v McDonald. In Moto 2, of course. In Moto GP as well. Maybe getting a taster of what's going to happen in Moto GP between the older Marcus, brother. 
And we just leaves by half a second. Get hard on the power now. And over that rise and far away now for Marcus. Can barely hear that Mark VDS engine behind us. We got two and a half seconds. Let's go through the low rider corner. Down to the final corner. Heading on to the sit for that. It's all turned in a bit early there. Very deceiving that corner uphill. You can carry so much more speed than you think you can. So it does the fly set 23 8. 23 6 even. Why didn't you do that in qualifying, McDonald? You've been right up there. And then had to work your way through the field, like we saw on that first lap. But then we wouldn't have had that fantastic battle with Marcus, probably. Or with the Vieira. So Marcus is clinging onto the tail end of the Uta Ride. Gains back some time in that first sector. Gonna see that in the first half of that. And then McDonald just eases away in the second half, especially over that rise where he seems to be somewhat more confident than the other riders. And you can see he's gained back a couple of tenths in that second sector. Now this third sector, this is where he can even gain seconds as all. Oh, okay, too much speed though. Over the rise, stay on the bike. I know it's something that's hard to do for you, McDonald. But there, you gained around half a second. So not as much as normal, but still gain time. Back to status quo is this lead. Into the final corner. Steady on the power. And onto the penultimate lap of the race. Oh, Marcus gained back some time in that final sector. Don't want to take it easy after that fast as that. He's looking to preserve the tyres as well. We've seen they're a bit more worn than the rear tyre. See around the first worn. Marcus gaining back time in this first sector. McDonald running wide. Are oh, you getting two back into his shoulder? Go up the hill. Hold on the power, then off it immediately. Got the wind turbines in the background, that's a bit distracting. It's around halfway through this point like that. So a second half lead to Marquez. We've got this set to dab in the brakes now before that jump. So make sure he's getting the bike in there, not carrying too much speed on the exit. Hard on the power down his back straight downhill. Wonderful sight for the fans and the photographers, no doubt. He goes wide well in the corner, but he's got over a three second lead over Marquez as he approaches the final out of this race. But Donald has returned. Now, can he just hold his nerve around a minute and a half as he dips back into the 24? So that's a better lap. It's even with messing up this first sector slightly. We go through the first corner. Should be gentle with all your inputs in this first sector. What about being patient into these right handers? Especially that right hander. Goes on forever. So all the rear tires getting loose. Now we can unleash the power. That's around halfway through this final lap. McDonald's got this in hand. Got a three second lead over Marquez. Morbidelli's still in third though. So he might still be leading after this as all well. McDonald goes wide. It holds on to the bike, holds on to himself. Now going down the hill, just a couple corners to go. But he returns to the podium and a top step. Very gentle breaking into the final corner. Very gentle on the power as McDonald returns to winning ways. 
great battle in the first half of the race with the Vieira Marquez and it just settled down and you won by almost three seconds in the end. Even doing the fastest lap by a country mile ahead of Marquez. Morbidelli in third. The Vieira fourth. Luti fifth. Baldassare sixth. Bagnaia seventh. Pacini eighth. Nakagami ninth. And Marini rounds out the top ten of Verge. Agata. Corsi with another good lot of points for speed up. Kent and Shirota grabbing the final point in his home round ahead of Axel Pons. As Nick and further down, Jack Vander in 21st for the South African. That upgrade of the crew that hasn't really affected him, has it? Very disappointing with Remy Garner in last. 10th for a second behind Samu Sandro Cortese. Very disappointing for the former Moto3 rider in his home round. So in the championship, Morbidelli leads at the halfway moment of the season by just three points ahead of Marquez. With Oliveira in third, just 19 points back on his KTM. Well, Luti is in fourth and Baldessari rounds out the top five. With Pacini in sixth, McDonald up to seventh, six points ahead of Bagnaia. Marini ninth and Nakagami into the top ten ahead of Verge. And as you can see, it's closing up in that battle for fifth with... Four riders separated by, or five riders, including Luti, separated by 22 points from 4th to 8th. As looking further down the order, you see Danny Kent up to 14th ahead of Axel Pons. 23 riders scored so far this season. You see Vanden 25th. And further down, Nakashima up to 27th ahead of Hernandez. And Manzi up to 29th with Locatelli at the back. As in the constructors stand in, it is Calix by 68 points. Ahead of KTM, who are 100 points ahead of Tech 3. And they're 18 points ahead of Suter and Speed Up have 18 points, who are 16 points back at the back. As McDonald looked very happy to be returning to winning ways in motor to his third victory. Oh, he's surfing. Don't ride off that wave, McDonald. As that was a new celebration from McDonald. And look, it's been a very good weekend for elusive overall. All the riders of Motor3 achieving the race objective, even though the separate qualified in the front row and dropped back to 22nd behind the Argentine rider who qualified 22nd finished 21st. But still, good credits earned in Germany, apart from Vando, who had a decent race from 21st after starting in 34th. But still, that boosting crew hasn't helped the South African. As he improves all of his skills, so does McDonald, and the Motor 3 riders improve their throttle management. As we earned a decent amount of credits, good return there, and reputation, look at that. And we have got to rest after a very good weekend there, partying, I mean, getting results, of course. And we end things with an activity day. I was going to do a TV program to get a reputation bonus of 100% in the next race, earn 10,000 credits for a photo shoot, Get 500 reputation for some high society. Or go to the gym with our rides and improve their body position ability by 100 XP if they do some coordination training. So we haven't gone for reputation much this season, but that's not a lot. 500. I think we're going to go with 10,000 credits for the photo shoot. As next time out, we'll be heading to the Czech Republic and the Automotodromo Bruno. A happy hunting ground for McDonald in the past. So can he continue his return to winning ways? And can our motor free riders continue their good form recently as well? Find out next time, Southwatch, and I will see you then.